Let's sing together. Come on, you weary. Now come on, you weary. Come on, you thirsty. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water. Come and thirst no more. Well, come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table, he will satisfy, taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. All right, let's sing together, for God so loved, for God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us. Take a minute and just turn to your neighbor and tell them you're grateful they're in the house of the Lord this morning. Oh, it's so good to see you here this morning. Let's continue to sing. sing bring all your failures. Now bring all your failures. Bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting with open arms see his open arms come on now God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever power of hell defeated the power of hell forever defeated So loved, God so loved the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. Come on, church. Praise God. Her 
sins and my sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burden to Calvary suffered and died alone how marvelous how wonderful in my song shall ever be come on church
the ears and shout your praise. Church, if we don't do it, the rocks and the trees will surely cry out. Amen. Let's lift our voices and sing. Yes, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts, come on. Louder church, all the earth and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will say, Hey, are you Lord? All right, from right here, deep down, come on. And all the earth will shout your praise. Sing it loud. Good morning again, church. Take your Bibles, if you've brought them with you, uh, to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. If you didn't bring one with you, it'll be up here on the screens. I would encourage you to bring your Bible with you every week. I still think that it's a, an important thing for us to do, to actually hold it, look at it, uh, and see it on the text. I don't want you to take... Uh, my word for it, you need to see it for yourself. That was an amen spot. There you got it, some of you. Um, and, and so today, I am concluding, Lord willing, I'm concluding um, a, what was supposed to be threes, turned into four-week 
uh, series on our vision of the three words, love, serve, and invite. Uh, if you've been with us, you know what today is. Today is Invite Sunday. Um, we we're talking about that component of our vision. Just a reminder, our vision is not the mission. The mission is the Great Commission, Matthew 28, Acts 1-8. Uh, you find it in all of the Gospels, also in Acts. And the essential part of that is to go into all of the world and preach the Gospel. That's the mission of the church. Um, we are a mission driven people. Our vision is the rails in which we let that run on. It's how we've said we, we really believe this is how we're going to accomplish uh, the great commission that's been given to us by loving God and loving others, by serving uh, the church and serving the community. And then today we're talking about inviting others to church and inviting them to come to a relationship with Christ. And so we pick up today in a really familiar passage of scripture in John chapter four. Now I want to kind of preface what we're going to do. Today is not going to be at all what I would classify as preaching. Okay. So if you came today, um, looking for preaching, you'll be sorely disappointed. Even if I was preaching, you might've still been sorely disappointed, but I'm not preaching as much as I am more giving some practical instruction on how do we go about doing uh, this task of inviting others, all right? And then next week, I wanna kind of just give a postage paid free commercial uh, for something that we're going to begin, a brand new series titled, This Is Us. This is us. So if there's ever been a time where you're saying, man, I, I just want folks to kind of get to know about my church, We've got it covered for you over the next, starting next week through the next at least five weeks we anticipate, uh, we're going to take time to walk through uh, uh, what makes Crescent Valley Crescent Valley. Uh, what do we believe? How do we function? What's an important thing to us? How do we make disciples? What's our process in that? We're going to talk about a lot of things that are unique to us uh, in how we go about doing church. And so it'd be a great opportunity for them to come hear more about us. This would also serve uh, as if they're here for each week, this will serve as they're attending what you know as lunch with a pastor. You'll hear that about every other month. We have one of those. That's a prerequisite for joining our church, okay, and becoming a member. However, if you will come each week, and we're going to have a, uh, a, a QR code specific for each week, and sign in on that, and you've been to all five weeks or however long it lasts, uh, then that would suffice as you going to uh, the lunch with the pastor. But it's going to be a fun, fun series. I encourage you to be here and be a part of that, all right? So today, John chapter 4, I'm starting my reading in verse 27. What's happened up to now, Jesus had been on a long journey with his disciples. He comes to a well and he sends them on into town to get food. While he's there, a woman comes out. You guys remember this encounter known as the woman, hence at the well. And uh, he begins to talk to her about her life. Now, according to her, he didn't have the foggiest idea who she was. There's a lot of you maybe that feel that same way. God doesn't know who I am. I assure you as much as he knew that woman, he knows who you are. He knows everything. That was an amen spot too. Y'all missed that one. He knows everything about you, just as he did this woman. And, and what she found out and discovered was he had been reading her mail because he began to engage her and talk to her about the thing that was keeping her from him. Well, what was keeping her from him? Same thing keeps you. Same thing that keeps me from him. Sin. And boy, that isn't a fun subject for anybody. That wasn't, I, I mean, talk about awkward, amen? We, we plow all around it. We kind of plow around it like you do a, a, a stump out in the field. Well, you know what happens when you plow around the stump in the field? It stays in the field. It's an eyesore. It's a stain. It, it messes up everything. No longer do you have strength. I'm talking, some of y'all ain't, been out of the city long enough to know what I'm talking about. But if you plow around the field, you no longer have straight rows. Now you're crooked the rest of the way out, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And so Jesus dealt with her sin. He confronts her about that, not in some 
uh, brash way, not in some crude way, but in a loving way. And her eyes are now being opened up to who he really is. And we pick up our reading in verse 27. It says, and at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, listen to this, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and they came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him saying, Rabbi, eat. And he said to them, I've got food to eat of which you don't know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said, well, that's so good. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say that there are still four months and then comes a harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes, look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this, the saying is true, one sows and other reaps. I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. Man, the Samaritans of that city be, believed in him because of the word of the woman. Now, this is interesting. Because of the word of the woman, they believed in him. This woman who testified that he told me all that I'd ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And then they said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Lord, speak to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You, you have to find some humor uh, a little bit when you read this text and how these men responded to that woman. They first had said, uh, we've believed because this woman has told us uh, uh, about the Messiah. They hear the Messiah and then they want to make sure they've cleared up with her. We're not believing because of you anymore. We're believing because of him. Now there's interesting uh, saying that is uh, a statement from the rabbis of old that says this, it's better that the words of the law be burned than to be delivered to a woman. Now I did, see I, some of you gals are looking at me like, well you better, I didn't say it. They said it. However, listen to how Jesus didn't agree with that narrow prejudice. He didn't agree at all. Jesus is clearly given that here to her and, and, and he's, he's giving her the, 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 the gospel. He's, he's pointing her to a right relationship with God through himself. This woman didn't come to Christ immediately. And so what we see is Jesus patience with her as he's explaining this to her and he sets a good example to you and I in our own personal witnessing. Yes, I want every time I share the gospel with somebody, I want them to fall down and start crying right then, repent of their sins and get saved and become a missionary in Botswana. We want that, right? We, 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 we want immediate response and immediate, oh, I can't believe that you've been so sweet and so kind and so faithful to tell me, but it's not always the case. If we're going to commit our lives to being a gospel witness, there's going to be times that you're going to run at a fast pace and there's going to be times that you're going to move at a snail's pace. And sometimes we've just got to learn to be patient with people. Amen. Jesus shows us this uh, here in our text. Now, she was uh, probably the least likely prospect for salvation. There's a lot going on here we don't have time to fully dig into. One of which, though, is she was a woman, and that was an uncommon thing for a man to engage a woman like that, even more so for a Jew to engage a Samaritan like that. Yet, that's exactly what God did 
And because of this, this woman, this Samaritan woman, is used to win almost an entire village to Christ. Some of you may be sitting here this morning saying, man, I'm a pretty unlikely uh, candidate for salvation. Uh, some of you that may not be saved feel that way. Some of you in here, if you're honest, that are saved, said, I, I felt that way. I was a pretty unlikely candidate. I, I didn't feel like that I had much to offer God. And that's where I was when I got saved. I'm like, man, they're just, I can't believe he'd save me, but much less save me ever use me for his glory. And, and I'm, I'm encouraged by watching her story. Because if you're a rem reminder, here's a woman who was a serial, um, what word would we use there? Well, she wasn't, she wasn't an upstanding citizen. She'd had five different men and the one that she was with now, she wasn't married to. She, she wasn't what every daddy dreams his daughters would grow up to be. And yet, Jesus comes along and says, she's exactly who I'm looking for. Isn't that awesome we serve a God like that? Isn't that awesome that he, he, he's that kind of God that he's looking for the outcast? The one that society would say, man, don't give them the time of day. Don't, don't give them any attention. They're, they're dirty. They're smelly. They don't have money. They don't have clout. They don't, they, they, they can't read. They can't write. They, they, they don't know which way's up, which way's down. And Jesus said, that's exactly who I want. I think I could possibly turn the world upside down with them. Because you remind her who is all, he doesn't need anything you have. He doesn't need your intellect. Because I'm talking this morning to some, some smart people. I see who you are. I see you out there. I'm looking at you this morning. I mean, there's some of you out there that's got IQs higher than I can count. I get it. Like some sharp, sharp folk. I saw a couple of you almost raise your hand like, are you talking about me? But can I tell you, he doesn't need it. There's some of you in here that'll never, ever from now till the day you take your last breath wonder or be worried about money. You're set. You've done well. It might have been something you inherited. It might have been you were just really good uh, handling money, but you're set up till you die. You're just never going to worry about it. You just, you got all the money you need. And then there's going to be some of you who's like, man, I ain't sure what we're eating for lunch. Which I think is pretty cool that God brings us all together. But what's even greater, he don't need your money. He doesn't need it. He's not impressed with it. He's not impressed with, with our wealth or our fame. He's not impressed with our, our position or our power. He loves people. If we're going to be a people that follow in the footsteps of people, we've got to become that. We can't be a people that's, that, that, that's, that's drawn towards, well, we've got to reach some more wealthy people. I, I hear folks say from time to time, we've got to reach some more tithers. No, 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 no. That, that, that we're not trying to reach tithers. We're trying to reach lost people. God can turn them into tithers. We're trying to reach people that could live for the glory of God. This woman had absolutely nothing to offer except just her willingness to trust and obey. So she goes to town to witness now. The disciples come back and they begin to ask Jesus about eating because that's what they went to do. They went to get supper, amen, run down to the Chick-fil-A and bring back some of the Lord's chicken. Have y'all had that new sandwich they've got with a penmo cheese on there? It's pretty good. And they get back and Jesus says, I ain't hungry. What are, you, what are you talking about you ain't hungry? We went to get you supper. He said, I had some food y'all don't even know about. And they said, like, who? Did somebody bring him panda? 
He said, I got some stuff you don't even know about. What had he been eating? He had been feasting on the will of his father. See, I'm, 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 I'm headed somewhere with this, and I, I want to get your attention on. Some of you have never known what it is to walk in the will of God in this area of your life. That's why you're always hungry for something else. Is what you're talking about? I, I, I've just recently, as you guys know, we had a big party celebrate 25 years of, of gospel ministry and, and really 25 years also of being saved. I, I was Prince Center to preach, same year that I was saved. And so for 25 years, I've, I've been serving the Lord Jesus. I'll tell you this, including preaching, nothing satisfies my soul and fills me up spiritually like being a gospel witness to a lost person. There's absolutely nothing that, that I'm talking about energizes me, that, that just, ab, I, I'm, I, I have no words to describe it. It's that good. It, it's almost addictive to the point that, and those of you that are soul winners know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes we'll even dread it. Sometimes we're like, oh man, I'm nervous, or oh, I don't want to. But then the moment you do it, you're like, why in the world did I stammer around and stutter before I did that? Why? He so filled my soul. This is what Jesus is talking about. I had food that you did not know about. Psalm 40 verse 8 says, I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. Yet number statistics would tell us that the numbers of us who are active in doing this is in, listen to me, is in the single digits in the average Baptist church. Single digits. I'm talking about those that would go and have a gospel conversation with somebody who does not know God. The numbers in the single digits of those who are active in doing that very thing. Let me say this to you in the sweetest way I can. There is no room in the harvest for lazy Christians. And that's what it comes down to a lot of times for us is just laziness, that we're, we're just not willing to, to go to work. By the way, that is the work. There is no other work. The work is to get the gospel to those who have not yet heard. No place for laziness. The work's too difficult. The laborers are too few. And by the way, it doesn't matter what style you, there's all kinds of different styles. Some of you may be that, that aggressive style, that direct style, that what I call the confrontational evangelist. And I want to kind of walk through, give you a picture of some of these. My, I had an uncle uh, that's, that's, that's with the Lord now that was one of these. He, he, he was just direct, and it came out of nowhere. His name was Danny, and, and Danny would just walk up to somebody and just look them in the eye, hey, and never talk to him before. Hey, do you, are you saved? Hey, do you know Jesus? And now for you, that may be bold. That may be like, golly, that scared me to death. Well, but it was just Danny's method, and it worked. He won all kinds of people to Jesus by just simply, and by the way, let me always say this. I like my way of doing it better than your way of not doing it. Amen? The only people that I, I know of that gets really critical about different evangelistic styles are those who are not sharing Jesus. And so yours may be that way. It may be that, that hey, you walk up and just right, right then and there, hey, did Anybody told you about Jesus? Do you know him? Are you saved? How do you know where you'd spend eternity if you died? Another one might be a, a, a testimonial style, right? This is where you tell your story. I use this one a lot. I use all of these that I'll talk about. But I, 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 I often will tell folks, hey, listen, about 25 years ago, I made the single greatest decision of my life to put my faith and my trust in the Lord Jesus. And he's changed my life so much that I've committed the rest of my life to telling everybody I can tell how they can know God through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Could I take the time to tell you how he's changed me and how he could change you? What am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm giving a testimony that it's not just something I've heard or read about, but hey, I'm a walking, breathing testimony of a, life that's been changed by Jesus. 
By the way, that's a good thing to be, amen? Right, would y'all? See, some of you just looking mad this morning. It's a good thing to be glad about. We got the greatest news ever to tell to a lost world. And by the way, everybody needs it. There's not a person alive on planet Earth that doesn't need to hear the gospel. Everybody doesn't need to be vaccinated, but everybody needs to be saved. Hello. Maybe it's an invitational style. That's a little bit what we're talking about today is just inviting someone. This is what the woman at the well here in John 4 did. He, all, all she did, she didn't go correct anybody's theology. He said, hey guys, won't you come and see a man who told me everything I ever did? That's simple. That, that's, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's cakewalk. That's, that's the easiest thing you could ever do. Just, hey, won't you come check this out? I met a guy that changed my life. Why don't you come check it out? It's invitation. Maybe some of you is a, and I know a lot of you this way, is a you. It's a serving style, kind of like a. Uh, you remember Dorcas in Acts nine? She was full of good works and charitable deeds. The Bible says. You go and you serve them in such a way to give you the opportunity to invite them to Christ through your acts of service. So what I want to do is I want to take some time to give you some practical ways in which you can invite people to church. This is a part of our vision here of inviting them to church and inviting them to know Christ. How can I go about inviting them? Because, it's, again, it's scary. How do you do it? Uh, well, here's a, just a few ideas. One, give an invitation to church to people that you encounter daily such as a server at a restaurant or a cashier at a grocery store, gas station attendants, whatever. And this becomes just a habit of your life that you, you, you build this bridge in such a way that you are constantly trying to find a way to invite somebody. So as you're going through the checkout line, it's quick, you don't have a lot of time. Hey, are you going to church anywhere right now? Well, no, I'm not. Hey, man, won't you come go to church with me? You've put a hook in the water. You've invited somebody. It's as simple as that. Uh, that may be a server. That may be somebody at the grocery store. Uh, here's one, okay? Now, you, you're going to have to be a little generous to do this one. Pay for somebody's meal behind you in a drive-thru. Um, if you're going through one of those health food places in the drive-thru, amen? We've got cards out here in the Vision Center. I think it's called f f Fast Food French, something. It's a, it's a card. I can't remember exactly what it says, but I've got some in my truck that I keep there. And whenever I go through them from time to time, I'll see somebody behind me and I'll say, hey, I want to pay for their meal. And you say, well, how do you know what they've got? You don't. You're going to have to be generous. Now, you're, you're hoping they're not paying for the football team, amen, right? But if they are, you better you'd be ready. And, and, and then you leave that card with them, and that card just simply says, hey, have a meal on us, and it's from the church, and it's just an invitation. Got our church inv invite there. That's pretty, I mean, that's pretty easy to do. We say, well, yeah, but money's, money's tight. M money's important. Well, yeah, so is heaven and hell, can I, can I remind her to all this? This is the vision of who we are as a people. It's not just something we do. This is who we are. We are a people who invite others to come to church. Why? Because when they come, they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why this matters. Use social media to promote events or big days at the church, invite a friend uh, to come give sp a private message, what, whatever the case may be, you, you promote everything else. My so, I have the biggest time watching some of y'all on social media. Y'all are funny. I, I know what you've gone through to get the shot. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The shot. It's the, the lighting's perfect. The, I mean, you, 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 we used to go on vacations. Now we go on photo shoots. We used to go on trips. Now we go on photo shoots. We, we used to go to ball games. Now we go to photo shoots. It's all about the shot. I'm not picking at that. Go do it. 
Y'all are pretty. You look so pretty on there. But if you're promoting that, how about you promote Jesus? How about you take time to invite somebody? Man, come go, come go to church with me. Here's one. Have a free garage sale. What do you mean free? Aren't they all free? You can go to any of them for free. No, no, no. I mean your stuff's free. Just gives. Can I say, I don't know everybody in the room, but I know something about everybody in the room. Y'all got too much stuff. Every, amen. Bless the Lord. Or oh me. All of y'all got too much stuff. You could just have a free garage sale. Now, here's part of the answer or questions you're going to deal with all day long. What's a catch? Because they're going to think there's something up. No, there ain't nothing up. But I, I'm doing this because God so changed my life. By the way, everything you're giving away that day is free. Don't be sneaking some stuff in. Don't be having them donation buckets out there. Just donations. You know, we've got some starving children. Give it all away. Why are you doing this? Because they're going to ask. God's changed my life, and I want to use every platform he gives me to point people to Jesus. By the way, I, I wish I didn't have to say this, but I will. You need to be here on the day you invite them to. I, I really wish I didn't have to say that. But, but part of this whole thing of being a gospel witness, it, 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 it challenges our faithfulness to our local church, our steadiness. That church no longer is that thing that we've, we've excused ourselves out of for everything that comes up. And by the way, everybody in here is going to miss. I, I get that. I'm not talking about never missing. But there's a difference in never missing versus I'm always, it's always the first thing that gets cut out of my calendar. We ought to be calendaring around it rather than trying to find some way to fit it in. But be here. Show them your commitment. And by the way, have a plan in place when you invite them to come and join you. Have a plan in place. I'm going to meet them out front. Don't send them in here. It's intimidating to walk in here, not know anybody, and just try to find your way around. Have a plan to meet them. And I know I'm being very practical. This is a horrible sermon. It's because it isn't one. But meet them out there. Walk them through. Take them to your small group. Go buy their coffee. Don't take them over there and say, mm, boy, it's expensive. I wouldn't buy it here. Now go buy them a cup of coffee. We probably have free coffee somewhere, uh, probably everywhere. Um, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Take care of them. Invite them to come set with you. Don't come in here and say, well, see ya. Set a goal each week how many you're going to reach and, 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 and then, or invite. And, and then this last one, then I, I got to move on so we can close. Then tell somebody about it. Well, ain't nobody's business. Yeah, but you ain't going to do it if you don't tell somebody. It's kind of like that diet you were going to start last week. Amen. Do you know how many diets I've started on Monday or was going to? You know you can't start a diet on a Tuesday, amen? I mean, once you get past Monday, it's like, ah, well, next, next Monday. That's the Lord. And so I'm just adding to the story the rest of the week, amen? Just building a testimony. I, I said that was the last one. Here's the last one. Um, develop intentionally relationships with lost people. A lot of us live like we're trying to insulate ourselves from lost people. We're just putting all these Christians around us. Yeah, by the way, it's good to have Christian friends. You need Christian friends. But if you're not building relationships with lost people, folks that don't have a relationship with Christ, chances of you engaging them with the gospel is slim to none. So intentionally develop relationships with lost people. Let me give you this, this last one here uh, b before we close. Uh, we talked about inviting them to church, but there's also the component of the actual gospel sharing uh, of, of having a gospel conversation with them. How, how do I do that? Here's a practical idea here. Just number one, be intentional about it. Th that... Most of us, if you'll look at your track record over the last year, maybe for some of you 30 years, you're haphazardly probably not going to do it. 
It probably isn't coming up. But if you'll be intentional about it, I'm setting out today, I'm telling somebody about him. You'd be amazed at how many people you see that need him and God gives you opportunity. So here's an idea, use a track, be a, 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 a starter. I know some of the people are like, man, I don't use tracks. Well, you use whatever you want, but if you're not doing anything, a track's a good way to get started. Just hand them out. I don't care what track you use. We've got all kinds of them out here. Invite your neighbors uh, or friends over for a, a meal in your home. And with the intention, I'm, I'm going to have a gospel conversation uh, with them. Uh, take advantage of opportunities when you're setting long term with somebody uh, for a long period of time uh, and making a point to share the gospel. My favorite place, airplane. They can't go anywhere. So they can go to the lavatory. Yeah, but they're coming back to land. You ever landed in a lavatory? Don't, don't do it. They're coming back. Just have a conversation. You don't have to be obnoxious. You don't have to be weird. We've got plenty of that. You don't have to be pushy, but just have an opportunity to do that. Um, and by the way, understand up front, his word doesn't return void. I can't stress that enough. You've got to understand that this is not about your slick words. It's not about your great presentations. It really is about the power of the word of God and the persistence of the spirit of God to take your pitiful efforts sometimes and transform lives. Can I remind you, somebody shared with you. Somebody either invited you to church, invited you to Christ. Somebody loved you enough, Christian, to say, hey, won't you put your trust and your faith in him? How about us do the same and love them enough to invite them as well? Choose a strategy that you're comfortable with. I don't care which one you choose. You, you can choose whatever strategy you want, but pick something and choose it. As I said, I like my way of doing it better than your way of not doing it at all. And let me say this before I pray. Be prepared up front for rejection. There have been a lot of people over the years that I've talked to that they, man, they stepped out and they were so eager and they wanted to share and they did until they got rejected and then they just, they quit. I don't know who told them that every time you share the gospel, somebody's getting saved, but they lied to you. So how do you know that? What if you did a really good job? Well, then I guess Jesus wasn't really good. Did you know that if you follow the ministry of Jesus, often when Jesus stood up to speak, the, the people would hang their heads and walk away from him? Do you remember the story of the rich young ruler? What'd he do? He didn't fall down and say, oh, what a great presentation, master. No, no, he walked away sorrowful because he realized what he had to give up to follow Jesus. They're gonna reject you, but I can remind you, they're not rejecting you personally, they're rejecting him. The only way they're rejecting you personally is if you've offered yourself as Messiah. By the way, if you're doing that, stop. Amen. But you're offering Christ as Messiah. We're not telling them that he's a good way to get saved. He's a, as a matter of fact, I think he's one of the best ways to get saved. No, no, no. We're, he's the only way for you, somebody to be saved. They can't get saved by being a good church member. They can't get saved by joining the Elks Club. They can't get saved by having more money in the bank. They'll get saved when they realize that they are a sinner who can't save themselves, that Christ came, he lived perfect life, he died a perfect death, he was buried a perfect burial, and he was, a, he was raised again a perfect resurrection on day three. Forty days later, he had a perfect ascension up into heaven, and the Bible would declare that one day soon he's coming back and their decision about Jesus is the only thing that will matter. Amen. Nothing else is going to matter. It won't matter how cool they are. It won't matter if it won't matter if they got the shot just right and got 10,000 likes on InstaFace. It won't matter. It won't matter how many people have shared your, your tick videos. 
It, it won't matter how, how, how popular you've become. It won't matter how pretty you are. It won't matter how many cars you own. How many businesses you run, how many employees you have, it'll only matter what you do with Jesus. And if that's true for everyone, oh, I pray that that create an urgency in this church family to say, if I have not been till now, starting this day, moving forward, I'm going to be an inviter a gospel witness. I'm going to begin inviting folks to church and I'm going to begin pointing them toward Jesus. If we'll do that, we'll turn our world upside down. We'll shake Tahlequah and Fort Gibson and Muskogee for Jesus' sake. I'm asking, would you come go with me and do it? So I've, I've never done. Here, here's, a, here's a good word and I'm done. I'll pray right now. Start. Start today. It's a good day to just say, man, from this point on, I'm going to say yes, I'm going to do it.